Hello guys, welcome back to the plot. It's October the 27th and autumn is in full swing now. We've had a couple of really hard frosts uh, just this week alone. Loads of torrential rain. So yeah, we're starting to feel like, you know, the season is drawing to a close. Still plenty of jobs for me to do though. Still plenty of things to harvest. I mean, if you have a look at some of these parsnips down here, I'm going to get a few of those out today and some of them will be absolutely lovely. Also, as he squints through the sun, um, in my cage back here, still got loads of kale, Brussels sprouts, they're all still in there ready to come out. Got my potatoes down here in this bed, if you can see that, I can't. Yeah, so loads of potatoes in the ground. I tend to leave them in the ground, lift them as I need them. They're absolutely fine doing that. Other than that, I've got a little herb bed down here that's just ticking over, so we're happy with that. A load of beetroot there, that's probably gone a bit woody, but it'll be nice for making these hearty winter stews that we do love at this time of year. Um, other than that, I've still got a few carrots to pull at the back end, they really do need pulling now, so I'll be getting a few of them today. Um, and then as for stuff still in the ground, my greenhouses, uh, all my chilli plants are still looking okay, they're looking good, loads of uh, chilies harvested off of there, I'll go and show you them in a minute. You'll have to excuse the mess in here, but have a quick look inside one of the greenhouses. So despite the cold weather, they're looking a bit ropey, but uh, a lot of the chilli plants are still here. They're still producing, which is lovely. Uh, these scotch bonnets here, as you can see, there's still some on there. They are ripening off as well. I've had a few. Uh, we've got these habaneros down here. Where are you? There you are. Sort of dark chocolatey coloured habanero, so they're looking lovely. What's that hanging off the bottom of my leaf? Yeah, just another leaf. Uh, the sweet peppers are done, um, in so much as I've harvested all of those. Got my jalapeno at the back there, there's still a few hanging off there. And these patio sizzle chilies here are absolutely lethal. Um, I stuck a couple of them in my gob and blooming egg knew about it. Um, oh, I'll just have a quick dig to the back. These long pointed sweet peppers, as you can see, there's still one or two left on there to uh, harvest. The plants are starting to look a little bit like it's, you know, end of a long season. And these, uh, still got a few, uh, what are these called, cayenne chilies as well. You can see a few of them. Still left to harvest. I say I've got that many chilli plants. I've been harvesting absolutely buckets, loads off of these, and there's still plenty more to come. Like I say, these ones lethal. These are nice though. These Serrano. They are hot, but very flavourful. Can't say the word. I know what I mean. So yeah, that's uh, one plant. There's still loads to harvest off. So I'll grab some of them today. Oh, excuse me. Looking back over the uh, the plot, then everything's uh, about ready for clearing down. I want to try and get, I've never grown, excuse me, let me talk to you, I'm so ignorant. I've never grown uh, garlic at this time of year, I've always put my garlic in in the springtime and it's always going fine for me, but I know a lot of you right now are putting your garlic out, putting things like uh, onions out um, for overwintering, that sort of thing. So um, I might give it a go, I might put some out as a little experiment, watch the worst that can happen. Show you in this greenhouse as well whilst you're here. Still a bit of a jungle despite the cold conditions. Here's my Cape gooseberries, these are going absolutely crazy. Um, I'll show you what I mean. As you can see, trying to get inside is a bit tricky at the minute. But yeah, little uh, little syphilis. Syphilis? Fissilis. So yeah, these little orange fruits in here, absolutely lovely. Been eating them quite crazy all summer. Quite citrusy, lovely. So again, that needs a really good clear out. Everything at the back sort of finished, uh, it's just the things near the front. So I've not actually been in there for a couple of weeks. Might have to have a, uh, a delve in. Got some of these little uh, yellow habaneros growing at the bottom there as well, they're ready to pick. So I shall have them off at some point. And then if you see in the background, the remnants of me, uh, my cucumber plants are inundated with cucumbers, so uh, there's uh, a bit of a mess at the back end there, but that can easily be sorted out, no problem. And then more chilies here. I love growing chilli plants, but I might uh, tone it down a little bit next year. The runner beans went really well this year. I've got still kilos of them in my freezer back home, chopped and prepped and ready. Um, so yeah, the rest of them just got left on this plant here. There's far more than I needed. I planted about 15 plants in all, and it's, yeah, it's given me more than I needed. It's been absolutely beautiful. The ones that have been left on now have started to go brown and dry out. Um, and obviously if you want to you guys can save your seeds for next year you see in there there's little runner beans now there's no difference from them for what you'll buy in the shops I can promise you that so that saved somewhere dry and cool can be replanted next year and you'll get yourself a whole new crop 
Uh, the other thing that you can do with these as well is um, save them all up. They're not very good to eat as they are, but if you stew them or cook them for a long time maybe in a slow cooker, something like that, yeah, you can add them to uh, a hearty bean stew. Uh, yeah, and they'll be absolutely fine. So yeah, I'm going to go through, I'm going to save a few of these as you can see, absolutely everywhere. I want to get the plants down and the canes down now, so we'll get these harvested. So that's the runner bean canes all removed and the plants removed. I had a load of uh, marigolds growing around. Now I don't know if any of you have ever whoops, fallen over while you're on camera. Um, you see the flower head on the marigold after it's died back. If you just pull that ever so gently, they're one of the easiest plants to harvest seeds from. Look at that, that's the marigold seeds in there. Distinctive little darts. So yeah, that's how easy that is. If you ever want to try saving some of your seeds, if you've had a particularly successful plant, it's literally uh, put us there in the seed head. Ever so easy. Just take them out, dry them out, put them in a paper bag to store them, plant them up next spring. Lovely. Fantastic. Millions. Every plant produces thousands. Hey, now I don't know if any of you remember earlier in the year, but I planted a load of uh, dahlias, flowers, from uh, seed, put them outdoors. They have done really well, actually. Um, that is until the frost got them and they've all died back a little bit. Now, with a the dahlia, they leave tubers in the ground, so they will re-sprout and grow up year after year. Um, if they're in the ground like this, then they should be fine. They should be well enough protected against the frost. If they're in a pot, you want to take them indoors or you want to protect them. The other thing that you can do, which I'm going to do in this case, is lift the tubers, um, save them over year, uh, over winter rather, and then replant them next year. So I'm not an expert. I've not tried it before, but I'm going to give these a little dig up and see if we can't get the tubers out so that we can replant them next year somewhere else. That word was plant, not prant. Now, as you can see, these dahlias are finished flowering now. The frost has touched them in several places as well. You can see they've started to die off and go a bit brown. So I'm just going to chop off the foliage a couple of inches above ground and then we're going to have a dig, see what we can find. What? These scissors aren't strong enough. I'm going to get me second tears. Chop, chop. Right, let's try that one again, shall we? So, let's have a little dig out, see what we can find in there. See that? That's the bit that we're going to try and save. Try and get as much dirt off there as we can. And then that should, if looked after well, we grow next year. Not bad, is it? One dahlia tuber. Tall yellow blooms there on the Jerusalem artichokes. Those ones over 11 feet in the air there. down at the bottom here, a late arrival of a lupin, ever so delicate pink colour. Well guys, my uh, fennel of Florence uh, didn't work out too well. You went to get a nice big bulb of that in the ground but it looks like it's just gone off to seed. So, I don't know, can't you do something with fennel seeds? 
Shall I leave them? Yeah, they're just in flower at the minute, so I shall leave them to do what they can. My two blueberry bushes down here, they, uh, they're looking really, really healthy actually. They're doing really, really well for their first season. I'll probably move those two plants indoors into one of the greenhouses as soon as I've got space, just to keep them out of the danger. Um, ah, what do you do with rhubarb at the end of the season? Are you meant to cut it back? Are you meant to do anything with it? The answer is uh, no. You just let it die back naturally, normally. As you can see here, the last uh, frost or two has uh, knocked it back. What you can do is uh, give them a good mulch, give them a good feed, some manure or something like that. But do not cover the crown in the centre. If you do that, it gets buried down and it has trouble. So leave the crown exposed and other than that, just leave the, uh, leave the, le the uh, leaves there to die off. Right, now we've had the first frost, this is a prime time for picking some of these little parsnips down here. Now, um, after a frost it sweetens them up a little bit, something about the cold turning the starch into sugar, I don't know exactly the science behind it, but that's what people tell me, it's never failed me before. So I'm going to go in the ground now, pull up a couple of these, see what they look like, see what they taste like. Mwah. Well, there certainly is plenty of foliage going on, isn't there? Look at all of this. Wow. They really have enjoyed this spot that I've given them. I know the best way to attack this. Right, let's shove everything that way so we can see what we're doing. Right, here we go then. Oh, it looks like lots of creepy crawlers have been enjoying those conditions. <gasps> Do you see what I see? No, because the camera's not there. So, let's have a little dig around looking for some snips. Hopefully, we're in luck. The foliage on top looks good. Let's see what we've got underneath. Oh, it's looking nice so far, isn't it? Right then, so, she use the old push and pull technique. this absolute jungle of foliage right well I want nice and straight we don't want uh, forky and twisted and horrible so come on then baby daddy wants a parsnip it's oh, the first one of the year that I've pulled up it's not terrible is he not terrible at all look at that Sorry about that, just rubbing the mud off me parsnips. Beautiful. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Uh, which one should we have? Should we have this one? Now that is about the size of a supermarket parsnip. So I'm also happy with him. Lovely job, lovely job. Let's have some more. Let's see if we can't break a record. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh come on then. Look at the size of you. Well. Can you see? You can just about see. That's the one I'm after. Oh, a little push down. A little pull up. Nice little parsnip there. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So, what's that? About that big. I'll get my camera twisted up in a minute and we'll be able to see properly. But first, there's another one. Beautiful, tender and true. I can't remember what these are actually, I'll tell you in a second. And then we'll just get one more whilst we're here. Because it'd be rude not to. Here we go. Look at that, there's another one for you. Let's get these cleaned up and we'll see what they look like. And here we have them all nicely cleaned up. Not a bad little show, is it, that? 
quite happy with them. Bit of a beast that. Need some cooking to get through there. So yes. And that was uh, that was from about a square foot as well. So if that was uh, one square foot, I've got this entire row to pull as well. It's all right. They'll sit around there until sort of February time. They'll die back, but uh, the actual parsnips in the ground will be fine. An absolute sea there. Let's see if I can get you the variety. Uh, oh, here we go. That one was parsnip. <laughs> oh, fluffy egg. Yeah, it was. It's tender and true. There we go. So that was that row. They absolutely romped away here. Just sowed them in the ground. Let them to it. You might have seen this uh, mighty uh, mess of uh, plants right here. This is my beetroot. This is all still sitting here at the end of October. Um, I've got absolutely loads of it out. Uh, always plant too many. But yeah, there you go, you see. It's a nice... Uh, a nice one there. Probably not so good for uh, eating and pickling, but very good for stewing. The only downside is it loses its colour when you stew it. Um, yeah, I made a nice uh, casserole and uh, put loads of beetroot in it. I thought, yeah, this is going to give it a deep, rich, beautiful no. It all went white and the colour kind of went away, so, you know, it still tasted good though. Beetroot! I'll probably leave that in there for now. We'll beetroot it out for the season. Right, my continuing mission to keep getting food off of this plot even though it's the end of October. The clocks went back last night actually, so I've just realised I've lost an hour this afternoon. Um, it's going to get darker a lot earlier in the night now. So, um, yeah, the sun's pretty sitting... The sun is sitting pretty low already. So, uh, I'm going to get a few of these carrots out. I don't know if you can see them. I'll show you. Check out this whopper! I think my uh, my biggest sin with these carrots this year is I didn't really thin them out any, so um, they've all been uh, stuck together. They were covered up for uh, a good long time during the start of the uh, growing, but uh, yeah, they're very very close together, so probably not reached their full potential size-wise, but they're still big enough to get a meal out of. You know what I mean? Carroty sized, isn't it? Now I'm going to work my way. Hi. I'm going to, <laughs> this is really low. Now I'm going to work my way down the road. I'm going to pull out loads of them, get them all cleaned up, and that, take them back home, and then I can put them into storage. We're going on a carrot hunt, and we're going to find carrots. Ah, look at them beauties. Oh, wow. All of these carrots here, that's a massive pile. I don't know if you can see how deep, deep that goes. But all of those carrots have come from there to there. So, what, about a foot and a half, 18 inch. Which is annoying because I've, I've got two rows of the blooming things that go on all the way back there. So I've eaten carrots until the cats come home. And then when the cats come home, they can eat carrots. I don't mean cats, do I? What's the saying? What's the saying? What, 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 what's... It's cows, isn't it? Cows come home. Right guys, now potatoes. These plants here, as you can see, are not healthy. They uh, are looking, no, I'm kidding, they're deed. Um, yeah, these are the ones that I planted as normal this spring. They grew, they got ready, and uh, they died back because they were ready. So I've left them in the ground. I just harvest them as I want them. Uh, because if I dig them all up, I've got a big sack of spuds somewhere I've got to keep and everything. And they, they don't keep anywhere better than in the ground, in my opinion. So I'm gonna dig a few up for my dinner. Uh, these could have been harvested any time from sort of early August, as you can see, end of October now, absolutely fine, no trouble, no problems, nice potato. So I don't understand about 
Christmas potato things. Potatoes do not grow in winter, I'm sorry. I know people think, oh there's this big like Christmas potato thing, oh, I want to harvest potatoes on Christmas. I can harvest potatoes on Christmas, but it's because I grew them this summer and I just leave them in the ground and harvest them. People and shops are selling winter potatoes and there's, to me there's no such thing. Potatoes don't grow in winter. It's too cold, it's too dark, frost kills them. So it's really, really misleading. Um, you know, Christmas potatoes, you probably get away with planting them sometime in August. And if you're lucky, you might get growing time through till early October. Um, but you're not, you're not going to be growing them right up until Christmas. So Christmas potato is not a Christmas potato. Rant over, I'm done. So there we go, late October, another couple of potato plants dug up. That'll keep me going for a week. With the rest of the plants I've got here, end of the year, no problem. I need a cabbage. Shocking how much you have to remove, isn't it? Poopy quarters and all sorts inside otherwise, look. No, you see. Hard to get them all out, isn't it? Oh, that'll do. So all of that, you get that. Still. Nice looking bit of cabbage that, isn't it? Beautiful. Apart from my dirty fingerprints on it. Anyway, it'll wash. Right, like I said before, the clocks have gone backwards, so we've got less time now in the evenings. Um, they just go back one hour here in the UK at this time of year just to make it a little bit lighter in the morning so that the school kids are safer. Um, something that always happens and then they go back again the other way in the spring. Trim back my hedge. Anyway, that was getting a little bit out of control, so that's a little job. Not got around to picking up all of the bits and bobs yet, but you know, we will do at some point. So that's looking a little bit neater there. The sun's over there, so I shan't send you over there. Um, the back plot, as you can see, the hedge is there. I don't know if you can actually see, but it goes about this high and then it doubles in height. So what I really want to try and do is uh, get down here at some point over the winter, get all them hedges really cut back as well, uh, just to allow a little bit more sunlight around here. Um, just inside the, well, I don't know what you call it, little grow house thing, I suppose, my little, my little tunnel. Um, I've got my sprouts. Um, I harvested that one today, that'll be coming back with me. Uh, the kale's all been, oh, let's have a little wander in. The kale's been pretty well picked over, um, as has the curly kale and the uh, the red kale at the back as well. That's right up on its big tall stalk at the minute. Look. That's probably about three, four foot tall. Um, yeah, what's that one? Nero, Cavalero Nero, Nero de Toscana, something like that. Um, and then of course my Brussels sprouts, which uh, obviously they've got white fly on them, everything has at this time of year. So you see some of the black markings on the leaves there. But the actual nobbies are not looking too bad on them, they're uh, thickening up quite nicely. So I've got four plants there. And then the one down here. That's my last cabbage of the year. Um, all my other cabbages are accounted for. As you see me harvest one earlier. Sorry, this is terrible camera work. But you know what I'm like. Oh, I'm not exactly a film editor, am I? Sunlight! Yay! <laughs> anyway. Um, Big squash bed down here, uh, it's a bit weedy, you know, but it's that time of year. So yeah, that is, everything's died off in there. Potato bed, obviously, down here, you've seen that a bit earlier on. Still got loads of spuds in there to get out. Um, my flower bed, there's the last of my artichokes in there, obviously I cleared out my, uh, my peas and my beans from there. The asparagus, asparagus is, um, it's all flopped over a bit actually. I did want to try and sort it out today because any excessive movement can uh, damage the crowns. But that's all starting to yellow off and die back now. This is the bed where I had me sunflowers. Oh, I just took the head off me asparagus, never mind. Next bed along uh, is the rest of me carrots there. That had, uh, You've seen me harvest some of those earlier on today. And there's a little borage plant here as well. He's looking alright so I thought I'd leave him in. Uh, next one down is me beetroot. 
again I've been eating beetroot until the cows come home so you know just uh, leave that be whether I use it or not I don't know but it's there in case I do um, and then there's a, is it a delphiniums just a couple of little plants left over there um, have a little wander over these look like they're glowing yellow but it's not it's just the last of the sunlight just hitting the tips of them that's my little herb bed that I put in that's some uh, fennel obviously that didn't do too well it didn't bulb up like it was supposed to so it's just gone to seed see what happens there um, and the rest of my strawberries down at the bottom there I've grew those from seed earlier on this year um, they seem to be doing alright actually I've had quite a few off of there and then the parsnip at a bed um, millions of parsnips in there again you've seen them I'm really happy with them boom um, so yeah we're proper proper happy with them happy this is how tall me um, my global artichokes are I'm 62 and then they're all the way up there not globe artichokes these are Jerusalem artichokes sorry I lied to you I don't know why need to you know anyway <laughs> uh, the butternut squash nothing happened there absolutely nothing I put them in about the same time they took a really really slow getting going and then they just went for it and they trailed and they went about 18 feet and absolutely no flowers no fruit off them whatsoever I got like a couple that were like you know four inches long not even worth bothering about um, and then my bed here, which had me, um, what's the name of that stuff? It looks like kohlrabi, kohlrabi, yeah, that was in that bed. That's all been finished now, it's just the last few nasturtiums in there, just waiting to get cleared up. Yeah, there's, there's one of the butternut squashes there. You can see where the original plant was, it was planted all the way around there, so it's trailed, 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 trailed. But it's not until it got there that it tried to set any fruit. Why that is, I don't even know. My sweet corn was here, that was beautiful as well. Leeks absolutely failed um, they all just collapsed a couple of weeks ago um, allium leaf miner I'm saying 99% because they went like some of them went dead slushy all of them died right back and you know it's just only a few of them have put back up again so I've just never been able to grow a nice leek I don't think on this allotment it's, here's uh, a couple of pumpkins that I'm taking home for um, what is it called Halloween I'm not like uh, a big Halloweener really but we'll have a, a bit of a carve on them there's just uh, two in there, they're about the same size. These were Atlantic Giants, as you can see. Didn't really get away. Um, I didn't give them the care and attention that they wanted. I just put the seeds out as a bit of an experiment, really, over on the far plot. But I think, you know, to get two decent pumpkins out of it, not too bad. If I'd have uh, if I'd have given it a bit more care and attention, obviously I'd have got more, which I might do next year for a laugh. Ha 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 ha. And then this is the harvest in this sack here. This elusive that doesn't want to be shown. <laughs> Why are you being so awkward? I've got one hand on my camera and the other hand is trying to desperately get into this bag but it's not happening. There's a, there's a cabbage in there and there's some other bits and bobs. There's a parsnip hiding in there that you might have just caught a glimpse of. So that's about it. That's me done for the day. Like I say, it's getting dark now so we've not got much daylight left. For those of you that have been following me um, throughout the year and throughout the years, again, I'm really, really sorry that there hasn't been that many updates recently. It's just, it's a time thing. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses but it's just you know doing the allotment doing everything else summer's always a really busy time at work and at home and everything else that's going on and it's just you know it's just the management time you know filming them takes extra time down at the plot editing them takes a few extra hours at home so it's just it's just been that side of it you know what I mean I've been loving the allotment I've been loving the plot uh, it's just been that side of it that's just been a little bit difficult so that's why I've not been doing the updates or anything but I do appreciate all you guys that have stuck with me um, hopefully we'll be able to get you know a few more out I know it's a boring time on the plot but winter always seems to be the time that I've got more time to uh, you know actually get this uh, get the videos out and everything like that yeah here's the plot in late October um, yeah it's not looking perfect but it's looking all right you know what I mean so still getting a harvest off it every single week it's still feeding me uh, quite well as you can tell but <laughs> forget about it uh, thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. Adios.